Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky said Thursday that support from his embattled nation's Western allies is key to his victory plan to end the country's devastating war with Russia as he laid out details of the plan to European Union leaders. Zelensky was also shuttling across Brussels to meet with NATO defense ministers. The EU is a key supporter of Ukraine, a candidate member of the 27-nation bloc, as it fights Russia's invasion that began more than two and a half years ago. Zelensky outlined the five-point plan to Ukraine's parliament on Wednesday without disclosing confidential elements that have been presented in private to key allies, including the United States. Former President Donald Trump on Tuesday refused to say whether he's spoken with Russian President Vladimir Putin since leaving office, as reported in journalist Bob Woodward's latest book. But if the two did speak, Trump said, it would be a smart thing for the United States. Trump, the Republican presidential nominee, was pressed on his communication with the Russian president during a wide-ranging and sometimes contentious interview with Bloomberg editor-in-chief John Micklethwaite at the Economic Club of Chicago. Woodward reports in his book, War, that Trump has had as many as seven private phone calls with Putin since leaving the White House and secretly sent the Russian president COVID-19 test machines during the height of the pandemic. A Trump campaign spokesperson previously denied the report. During Tuesday's interview, Micklethwaite posed the question to Trump directly, can you say yes or no whether you have talked to Vladimir Putin since you stopped being president? I don't comment on that, Trump responded. But I will tell you that if I did it's a smart thing. If I'm friendly with people, if I can have a relationship with people, that's a good thing and not a bad thing in terms of a country. Trump said that Putin, who invaded neighboring Ukraine and who has been accused of war crimes by the International Criminal Court, is well respected in Russia and touted his relationship with him, as well as the authoritarian leaders of North Korea and China. Look, I had a very good relationship with President Xi and a very good relationship with Putin, and a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un, he said. Trump also defended his support for high tariffs as an economic cure-all. To me, the most beautiful word in the dictionary is, tariff, Trump said. Micklethwaite repeatedly pressed Trump on warnings from economists that the costs of high tariffs will be passed along to American consumers, raising prices. But Trump didn't budging. It must be hard for you to spend 25 years talking about tariffs as being negative and then have somebody explain to you that you're totally wrong, he said as the audience laughed. Later in Tuesday's interview, Trump refused to say whether he would commit to a peaceful transfer of power should he lose the November election. He also claimed there was a peaceful transfer of power after the 2020 election, despite his supporters' violent attack on the Capitol on January 6. Come on. You had a peaceful transfer of power compared to Venezuela, Micklethwaite responded. Trump also repeated several other falsehoods in his response claiming that, not one of those people had a gun, and that, nobody was killed, except Ashley Babbitt, a Trump supporter who was shot and killed by police. In fact, five people died in the riot and its immediate aftermath, including Brian Sicknick, a police officer. For additional officers who responded to the riot killed themselves in the following weeks and months. To me, the most beautiful word in the dictionary is tariff. And it's my favorite word. It needs a public relations uh, firm to help it. But to me, it's the most beautiful word in the dictionary. 100, 200 percent on things you don't really like. You're also talking about 20, 10, 20 percent. I agree it's going to have a massive effect, positive effect.
It's going to be a positive, not a negative. Well, we'll just, just let, let me just uh, no, no. Let me tell you. I know how committed you are to this, and it must be hard for you to you know spend 25 years talking about tariffs as being negative and then have somebody explain to you that you're totally wrong. It'll have a negative. It will have. If China invades Taiwan, would you send American troops to defend it? Well, the reason they're doing it now is they're not going to do it afterwards. Okay, so it's, you know, so they're doing it now. They want to do it China. Now. Look, I had a, I had a very. I had a very good relationship with President Xi and a very good relationship with Putin and a very good relationship with Kim Jong-un, who has a nuclear force that you won't even believe. Can you say yes or no whether you have talked to Vladimir Putin since you stopped being president? Well, I don't comment on that, but I will tell you that. If I did, it's a smart thing. If I'm friendly with people, if I have a relationship with people, that's a good thing, not a bad thing in terms of a country. You look at the events of January the 6th, 2021, it showed to many people America's democracy was unruly and violent. Only three weeks to go to the election. Will you commit now to respecting and encouraging a peaceful transfer of power? Well, you had a peaceful transfer of power. You had a peaceful transfer of power. You had a peaceful... Was... Come on, President Trump. You had, you, a peace... you, had a peace... you had a peaceful transfer of power compared with Venezuela, but it was by far the most, the worst no, transfer no, of power no. for a long time. Thank you. I, I appreciate that because this is the you know what they like to do. This is what they like to do, uh, and, question, and you know it's very question, interesting. Question, question, President Trump is: Would you respect yeah. the decision? When I found out about this interview, I did a little check. He's a man that has not been a big Trump fan over the years, so I had a choice: Do I do this interview or not? I'm glad I did it, but do I do this interview or do I disappoint a lot of people? Because I know a lot of people in the audience. But his view is very different than mine. Let, let me just say, March, we had a term, peacefully and patriotically. These were people. If you think an election is crooked, and I do, 100 percent, if you think the day it comes when you can't protest, you take a look at the Democrats. They protested 2016. They're still protesting it. And it was love and peace. And some people went to the Capitol. And a lot of strange things happened there. A lot of strange things with people being waved into the Capitol by police, with people screaming, go in, with, that, that never got into trouble, you know? I don't want to mention names, but you know who they are. A lot of strange things happened. But you had a peaceful, very peaceful. I left. I left the morning that I was supposed to leave. I went to Florida. And you had a very peaceful transfer. This was not a... Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, those people that did go dead, which was a tiny fraction of the people that went to Washington, I mean, you're talking about a, a, a very, very small, because you know, hundreds of thousands of people, and I don't know what you had, five, six, seven hundred people uh, go down to the Capitol. But those people, that was not, that was n not one of those people had a gun. Nobody was killed except for Ashley Babbitt. She was killed. She was killed. She was shot in the head by a policeman that was, had no, what he did was horrible. So, so I think we should be allowed to disagree on that. And obviously, you see by the reaction in this room, there's a lot of other people that disagree. Good job. Come out this way.